outside of the Cuba, it seems like the island nation will become a hot spot travel destination for 2017. But before you book that ticket, there are still some important things you need to remember before you go. Joining us today to fill us in, Steve Marshall. He's the director of Cuba Ventures. Steve, good morning. Good Thanks morning. for coming in. Nice this is exciting. You said you lived there for a dozen years, so you're really yeah. an expert on this. Well, you could say that, yeah. I think the first thing folks think about is currency. How mm -hmm. do you handle the currency over there? Right. Well, the, the, the Cuban currency, um, you cannot exchange it anywhere in the world. So basically, you have to take your own currency to Cuba and then exchange it while you're there. Um, also, you have to focus upon the fact that the, uh, your U.S. credit cards won't work in Cuba. Okay? Wow. So you do need to take a lot of cash. Okay. Can you spend the American dollar there as well? Do they like that? Well, you, there are certain locations, especially the private restaurants, which are called paladars. Um, some of them will accept the U.S. dollar. Okay, and then they'll do the exchange afterwards. And you may find the odd taxi driver that will too, especially if it's a private taxi. Yeah, I could imagine that. I'm mm. sure they probably value the American dollar currency there yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay, when it comes to driving, you mentioned the taxi cab drivers. What about mm. renting a car yourself? I would not recommend renting a car because Cuba has these quirky laws where um, if, you, if you get into an accident, even a small accident, um, sometimes uh, they need to resolve the case before you leave the country. Oh. So unless you want an extended stay in Cuba, then. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you're probably best not driving in Cuba. Right? That might be a tough one to explain to the boss. Mm -hmm. I've been an offender. Or, if, or if you do want to stay in Cuba, get into an accident. <laughs> <laughs> so you could. Yeah. By the way, I'll be here a while working this yeah. thing out. Uh, what about language? Uh, it, uh, do they speak English there? Is, is it easy to translate yes. or do you yeah, need in, to in, kind of brush up on your... Of course. In, in, in many of the main tourist areas, especially in Havana, Varadero, Cayo Coco, Santiago de Cuba, you're going to find tons of people that are speaking English, okay? And obviously the, the, the the, the national language is Spanish, okay? But yeah, I mean, uh, Americans won't have a problem. And we should probably brace ourselves because we're not going to see a lot of McDonald's or Starbucks on every corner. Not right now. Not right now. But um, what Americans should do, and, and, and I really think that this is important, is that they should sample some of the private restaurants. You should be aware that Cuba is now allowed private enterprise. So some of these private restaurants are just amazing. So what would you recommend as far as like a dish goes, a traditional Cuban dish that everybody should try once they're down there, aside from the Cuban well, coffee, which I've heard is amazing. Anybody who speaks Spanish will know that arroz frijoles, which is rice and black beans, is the staple Cuban diet. And that accompanied with either stripped pork or chicken is, is the staple food in Cuba. So, so yeah, try it. I mean, uh, that is probably the best dish. And we talked a little bit about this during the break, but the history there is so important. So to travel to some of those cities is really like... Yeah, I mean, uh, let's, let's bear in mind that, that Cuba is, is the island that Columbus found. So the first cities that Columbus founded in the Americas are in Cuba. So the history in Cuba is amazing, especially for people on this continent. Wow. Steve, great yeah. information. Where can people find you? Um, CubaVentures.com okay. and Travolution.com. Travolution.com.